Ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are here for the very first time, the name of this platform is called Get Fit Mining. Get Fit Mining is a move to earn platform where individuals like you and I are able to take the movements that we perform on a day-to-day -day basis and earn from that movement. Now, Get Fit makes it sound like, you know, you have to go to the gym and work out and all of those types of things. And, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, there are definite health benefits to doing so. However, the Get Fit Mining platform simply is here to encourage you to move more on a daily basis. And it incentivizes you to do so with digital rewards that have a, you know, a, a dollar value or the ability to be turned into fiat currency and, you know, utilize that for your day to day living. The Get Fit Mining is a platform that has actually evolved over the past three years into, you know, something that many of us are looking at as a groundbreaking blockchain ecosystem as a result of basically because it's allowing us to earn as individuals from the things that we're already doing every day. Getting out of bed, going to work, going to the restroom, going to get something to eat, playing with the kids, all of those activities are things that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're able to actually earn from that. This platform was inspired by the original Bitcoin white paper, which actually set the stage for cryptocurrency and blockchain technology as many of us actually know it today. This white paper is the reason why, I'm quite frankly, I'm pretty sure just about everybody that's on this call is here as a result of that because it sparked a wave that has that is continuing and i believe will be here to the end of time well this platform is actually following those principles almost to a t the platform is fully decentralized and it is a self-sustaining ecosystem that's driven by the individuals that are actually participating in it peer-to-peer -peer community that's me and that's you the people that are actually using the platform. Now, Gifted Mining is the branded name that over the course of the next two to three weeks will be rebranding into MoveQuest so that the name in and of itself can do a better job of covering or umbrella or putting an umbrella over the many other things that this ecosystem or infrastructure, now that it is has been solidified, can actually allow us to do we're just starting with the move to earn platform but there are other things that will make themselves available to us as time progresses to utilize the same ecosystem to earn on a day-to-day -day basis and when you think about the bitcoin white paper and you really over time are able to actually grasp what this platform actually is and what it represents i believe you will agree with me that you when you step back and take a look at it this is actually crypto being done the right way unlike many of the other things that you know anybody that spent any time in the crypto space has truly become familiar with. And we won't go through all of these in detail, but you're looking at crypto projects that are selling pre-sale tokens just to raise money for a project that most of the time they don't have the expertise or the commitment to actually see through and be successful long-term while they're in, and in, and in doing so they're diluting the value of the assets that we typically invest in along the way so that you know even if the project were to be you know uh, uh produce a product or service to the marketplace the value of the assets that we've acquired typically aren't really worth very much at all then you have trading platforms that you know promise you know fixed returns on a day-to-day -day basis that you know never last for any extended periods of time and most of the time they disappear in the middle of the night with everybody's money that has actually been you know uh invested and they have no recourse then you have smart contract platforms where people out the gate are able to actually you know receive financial reward early on but like your classic 
Ponzi scheme, even though it may not be designed to with negative intent in place, they typically lack you know, a product, service, or solution that causes people to constantly come back and need to engage with that smart contract over and over and over again or drive business or customers to it. And what ends up happening is, is once new money stops coming into it, it typically fails because the engine can no longer run without that activity. And then you just have your flat out scams that are out there with people that have nefarious intent that want to hurt, harm, or endanger for financial gain. And these are the things that we typically run into in the crypto space. However, when taking a strong look at what MoveQuest, GetFit Mining, soon to be MoveQuest, actually brings to the table or to the forefront that makes it kind of stand out amongst all the other things that we typically see is a competent development team, truly committed to the project, evidenced by their, the development and testing that has taken place over the last three years, evidenced by the fact that it is a 100% debt-free project that was self-funded by the creator with no investors, which means that no tokens were given to investors or no tokens were allocated to the developers and no tokens were uh, allocated or uh, obtained by the creator herself. For you and I, that is a blessing in disguise because what happens typically in those scenarios is those tokens that are issued early on at extremely low costs, we end up as in, as people that come to the table and part with our hard-earned assets, end up being the ones with the short end of the stick because those that are holding tokens early on at, in large numbers at low cost are the ones that go and sell those on the open market to, to regain their investment back or to be compensated for work that they have performed. In this case, the creator said, no, I'm going to pay. I'm not going to bring in any investors and I'm going to pay the developers for the work that they do. And I'm not looking for, you know, a financial windfall on the front end of my project. I'm going to do the same thing that I'm asking everyone else to do. And I'm going to design a platform where not the money's not coming out into the hands of a small group of people or into one person's hand. We're going to feed that back into the ecosystem so that it can continue to thrive long term. And when you put a project together that is totally decentralized, managed by smart contracts, basically taking the, the, the human element out of holding our money, the things that we have earned by using the platform, that is a formula for long-term sustainability and trust. This is a self-funding ecosystem, and it is designed to cause or uh, to create an atmosphere that causes those, those that are using the platform to want to engage with it on a daily basis. So we become the customers for the platform because we are submitting our data, our proof of physical activity, and we'll cover that momentarily, but our proof of activity on a day-to-day -day basis. And in doing so, the transactions that we perform consistently add liquidity to the infrastructure that helps support and maintain the value of the assets within it. That's part of what this self-funding ecosystem actually is. And that is what is meant by having a community-driven project. We engage with it. And in doing so, we are the ones supporting it. And on the design side, on the back side of it, there's a liquidity provision that knows how to, that monitors the the uh, the health, if you will, of the ecosystem, and it knows when to inject liquidity, and it knows when to go out to the open market and actually pull tokens out of circulation to main to help support and maintain the integrity of the value of the assets that we're earning or that we're mining on a daily basis. So one would say, okay, 
you know, what are the components of this ecosystem that actually make it work? What does that picture actually look like? Well, we bring our proof of physical activity to the table, the energy, the movement. That's what we do. And in doing so, the platform provides an application that for uh, which is called the Get Fit Mining app, which is available for download on Android and iOS devices that seamlessly syncs with Google Fit and Apple Health to track users' activities such as steps, distance, calories, workouts, and sleep. These are the five categories that are monitored within this ecosystem that we use to mine on a day-to-day -day basis to allow us to be able to earn digital rewards. So they provide the application, but in order for each of us to actually be able to mine in the ecosystem, in addition to our physical activity, we have to have at least one miner mining for us in the ecosystem. However, the ecosystem is designed to where each account can have up to seven miners working for us at a time. This somewhat gamifies the, 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 this entire experience because now we can take our physical activity and then we can look at the mining capacity that our miners or our digital assets, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, whatever you want, nodes, or whatever you want to call them. This is, a, this is a depiction of the five different levels of miners that this, that's inside of this ecosystem. However, everyone starts at the exact same spot, and that's with presently named a Lenny Miner. And that Lenny Miner gives each user that acquires one a 50% mining capacity. And a person can have one or more of these. You can have as many of them as you would like. However, you can only put seven of them to work at one time. However, if you want your miners to be stronger, you can actually increase their mining capacity at any time, which we'll talk more about momentarily. And we'll show you an example of that later, what that looks like in the real world. Now, once you've acquired your miners, you heard me mention that you can have up to seven of them working for you at any given point in time. Well, inside of the ecosystem, there's what's called mining docks. So once you acquire a miner, you own that asset. Now, you can just hold that asset and do nothing with it. You don't have to mine with it. Some people mine with some. They fill them up. They buy more to hold on for later because it's kind of like real estate. As this ecosystem grows, the value of those miners will increase as well, just like a new neighborhood. Once that neighborhood starts to fill up, the value of the homes start to go up at the same time. But when we look at mining in and of itself, we have seven slots that we can actually dock our miners in to put them to work. If it's not in a dock, it's not working for you. If it's in a dock, it's working for you. Everyone gets a free docking slot. And the remaining six docking slots have a progressively increasing cost associated with unlocking that slot that will enable you to place a miner in it in order to start earning from it. Unlike many projects, when we look at the miners and when we look at the mining docks themselves, in order to participate in this platform, one has to have MQT. MQT is the symbol for MoveQuest token. MoveQuest token is listed on Uniswap, the largest decentralized exchange in the world. And it is presently on the Avalanche blockchain. So in order to participate in this platform, one must go out and acquire MQT and then utilize, again, I say utilize, meaning there is a use case 
for the token, unlike many other cryptocurrencies that are out there that have zero utility. This platform, utility number one, is it is needed to acquire your miner, your Lenny miners. This, this is actually the only thing that you can actually purchase inside of the entire ecosystem as it stands to date. A Lenny miner where you exchange your di MQT digital asset and you receive something in return for it being a miner. You're purchasing a miner. You're not investing. You're purchasing a miner. Then you have to unlock, if you do anything more than one docking slot or put one miner to work, you then need to use MQT, second utility, real use case. You need MQT in order to unlock the docking slots so that you can put more miners to work. Here's something that is unique, and I feel like this is a great point to interject this. A lot of people look at projects and say, well, you know what? As soon as people stop coming in, because you heard me mention it earlier when I talked about smart contract platforms, when people stop coming in, it will fail. It will fizzle because there's no new money. We're going to get to that. But one of the things in this ecosystem that helps maintain its the stability in the market is the fact that when MQT is used to purchase miners and to unlock these docking slots, they are then taken out of circulation and put into a vault. And what do you mean when you say vault? Well, let's go back. Remember earlier in the beginning, and I mentioned that this project almost mimics the Bitcoin white paper to the T? Well, we also follow their tokenomics. Just like Bitcoin, MQ, there will never be more than 21 million MQT ever in circulation. Right now, there's a finite amount of tokens that will be distributed each and every day for the next four years. After that four years is up, we have a halving, just like Bitcoin, where the number of tokens that are distributed on a daily basis are cut in half. What that does is, is it reduces the amount of tokens that are in circulation. And if the demand for the token continues to rise, the only thing, something has to give. And that give in this instance is it create that buy pressure with, and demand for the token causes the coin value to continue to rise. So the more people that enter this ecosystem, the, that means the more miners that are purchased and the more docking slots that are unlocked mean the more tokens that are taken out of circulation. And that process continues over and over and over again from now until there's no one else that wants to actually participate in the ability to earn from their day-to-day -day movements that they're already doing. So the way this has been structured is something that will, that will I believe, will attract many people for a good amount of time to come but we'll talk more about that momentarily. So now that you have your miners and you have your docking slots that you put them in, and you heard me mention that everybody starts with the lowest powered miner being a Lenny miner. Now, those Lenny miners, you know, the, uh, the, one of the things that I really like about this project is the, fa is the fact that the barrier of entry is extremely low. It puts just about everyone across the globe in a position in target range of being able to participate in this project one way or another. Because a Lenny miner is equivalent to 50 USDT. 50 USDT, which would be the equivalent of 50 US dollars in MQT, which is what you would need to purchase it with. And that Lenny miner comes with a 50% mining capacity. Now, if an individual wants to increase their mining capacity, just like um, 
so that they could actually earn more on a day to day basis. They're able to evolve that Lenny up to a primary, which will double double its mining capacity up to 100 percent for an additional 30 USDT. Now, as I'm going through this, I want you to remember before I talked about the utility of MQT in purchasing your miners and unlocking your docking slots. However, when we get to the evolution process, so for those of you that are just now getting started and for those of you that will be getting started, keep this in mind. You need MQT to purchase your miners. You need MQT to unlock your docking slots. That pulls MQT out of circulation. When it comes to the evolution process, we're using USDT. So when the person takes this Lenny and evolves it up to a primary to get more power, this 30 USDT on the Avalanche blockchain is what goes into the, the evolution contract that is used for the liquidity of the project. So we're adding liquidity and we're removing supply at the same time. That is one of the other elements that's helping stabilize the pair. So the project is structured so that it never has to sell MQT tokens itself to go get liquidity, which would drive the value down. The structure of it alone helps keep it healthy. And individuals are incentivized by the ability to gain additional digital rewards each day by increasing their mining power or their mining capacity, which causes them to or us to want to make them stronger. So if I have this primary and I want more than 100%, mining capacity, I take that primary and I evolve up to an ultra miner for 125% mining power for 40 USDT. And again, this is for each miner. So if I have seven of these, I, that's going to be $280 going into liquidity. If I had seven of these, that was another $210 going into liquidity. If I take that ultra miner and I want to evolve it up to an alpha miner so I can boost my daily mining capacity up to 175%, then that's 60 USDT per miner. So that's another 400 and what is that? 420 USDT going into liquidity. And the granddaddy of them all in this ecosystem is an Omega miner. An Omega miner allows an individual to be able to mine with up to three, well, 300 percent mining capacity with one miner. So if I have seven available docking slots, the goal now, will everybody be able to do that day one? Absolutely not. But a person can start with one miner mine with it with their physical activity and they can then take their profits and use those profits to acquire more assets and or increase their mining capacity by evolving each one of those miners up so you can see how everybody won't be able to come in and run straight to seven omegas but over time, you got people coming in at various levels that are evolving at different rates. That's doing what is constantly bringing liquidity into the ecosystem. And as the ecosystem grows, so will in time, the market will dictate that the price of the, the market value and the price of the miners, the lendings will go up. At a certain point, the cost to evolve will go up at a certain point. We all know that in the real world is inflation. The prices go up. Values go up, just like the real estate market. This is how this works. However, for a person to get an Omega miner, you can't evolve your way up to an Omega. You have to merge into an Omega. And in order to do that, one would have to have two alpha 
minors. So what does that mean? A person would have to take one lineage and evolve up to an alpha and another lineage and evolve up to an alpha, whether it was done all at the same time or at different times. It doesn't matter whether it was done straight through or one at a time over time. Whatever the scenario, you would need two alphas to merge into an omega. That would be presently because we're going through a rebrand phase at this time. This is discounted to 100 USDT per alpha. So 200 USDT and two alphas to obtain an omega. That will revert back to the regular price of 120 USDT. So it'd be 240 after the rebrand has concluded. So this is how you increase the actual power of your miners so that you can position yourself to earn as much as possible. The lowest end to the highest end or anywhere in between is where any of us can position ourselves to win with this ecosystem. It's not a competition between each other. It's really a competition between ourselves to do as much as we can physically in conjunction with the amount of mining capacity that we're able to acquire that generates our digital rewards on a daily basis. So we as individual users bring our proof of physical activity to the table and the platform provides the app, the miners, the mining docs, and the ecosystem and structure to evolve those, those miners up for more power. And I always like to highlight the fact that, you know, you heard me say track, you heard me say monitor, you know, I uh, had a discussion earlier today where or was on a Zoom call where someone was mentioning, you know, they don't want people knowing their business or having access to their data and all of that. And, you know, when you, when you really think about this, Get Fit Mining is not doing anything with your data and, and 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 this whole move quest platform does truly prioritize everyone's privacy because they're not sharing your information with any third parties they're not storing anything on the server why because everything that's done in this ecosystem is all done directly on the blockchain this guarantees transparency and privacy protection for everybody involved and if you notice i said all transactions occur during uh, uh directly on the blockchain to further you know uh highlight your privacy and how it really matters in this platform because everything's on chain you never actually have to provide any of your personal information to begin with so there's nothing to be stored and when it comes to your physical data, what this platform is doing is what we're actually doing is generating hashes, hashes that are then uh, um, saved or stored on the blockchain. And those hashes are just numbers. You walk 19,247 steps. That's a number. You walk, uh, you cover, you know, 8.2 miles. That's a number. You, you those numbers or what's being saved to the blockchain. That's how the hash, uh, the hashes are created that validates the fact that the physical activity that was done is true. That is what's being captured. Not XYZ person was on XYZ street at XYZ time. Your phone is already doing that part. Not get fit mining. So, and, I, and I, I highlight that because I want everybody to know this platform is not changing anything that's not already happening already. Whether you know it or not, it's already transpiring. Most of the conversation up to this point, and probably if you've had discussions outside of this Zoom, have been about the ability for this platform that has this token that's just, you know, phenomenally performing at the moment. But here's something that I want, I always like to highlight. The financial aspects of this have been great. And they look like they may continue to be great for some time to come. 
But by the mere fact that individuals on a daily basis are being incentivized to get up and move more, become more active, engage with friends and family, you know, there's a there's a uh, a zeal, if you will, that's starting to run through the community of the people that I talk to on a daily basis that are engaged with this platform right now. And I really, really like that because more important than financial gains, most people would admit that their health, their wellness, their fitness, you know, their overall well-being, not just for them, but for their friends and their family is more important than the money in and of itself. This platform has been designed to actually bring all of that together cohesively into one project that allows, you know, I I like to call it the perfect marriage between health and wealth. And this platform is allowing us to actually participate in something that does both. So what does it look like for a person to get started? Number one, you would have to have a little bit better idea of what it is that you want to acquire. Either you want to come in, you know, um, with one Lenny minor or whether you want to go all the way to, you know, Omega minors or anywhere in between. The prices of each minor is $50, 50 US DT worth of MQT. And we'll have some scenarios for you to work through to actually figure that out. Or you can come in and say, hey, I have this amount of you know um resources that i can apply to this project and then you can back into the most effective way to structure your account then you will need a decentralized wallet that will allow you access to web 3.0 to be able to connect your wallet to the website and use that wallet to actually perform the transactions in the decentralized space. For those of you that are here for the first time and you're like, well, what is in the world is he talking about? I'm gonna show you momentarily what that looks like, but just know this, you don't have to be a crypto expert to participate in this platform. You don't have to, quite frankly, you right now, you don't need to know anything about crypto. One of the things that I like about this project, again, going back to the beginning, when I said crypto being done the right way, this especially in the decentralized space by participating in this project in and of itself it's going to allow you it's going to allow you to learn crypto it's going to learn and and i'm jealous of those individuals that are just getting started in the crypto space because i wish my experience starting out was like this because it's going to help you identify what crypto is all about and it's gonna allow you to be able to sniff out the projects that are not real crypto projects or that are not doing crypto the right way. Once you have your wallet, you're gonna acquire the necessary cryptocurrency to put in your wallet. You're gonna get an activation code from the person that shared it with you. And then you're gonna follow the six steps that are um, on the website to walk through and get everything set up. Then you're going to download the Get Fit Mining app onto your phone and connect it to the fitness apps that are already on there, whether you're on iOS or whether you are on Android, either one. Those are the steps that we actually go through in order to get set up with this platform. Now, what I want to do...